Today, I'm gonna to show you how to style hair in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode, it's gonna be awesome, guys. We're dealing with hair, and hair's something, it can be really tricky to get right in a photo shoot. So we're gonna show you how to fix things in Photoshop. In today's episode, we're gonna show you how to liquefy and shape hair to get it looking perfect. We're gonna show you how to take away flyaway hairs and even add hair detail to blank areas. All right guys, we're starting off with shaping the hair. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and look at our image today, which it's a really great photo and it's gonna be made all the more complete when we get this hair under control. So we're gonna be shaping the hair using the Liquify tool. Now the Liquify tool is a great tool. It's gonna allow you to push and pull pixels, but I don't wanna do that on my background layer. So what I'm gonna do is create a duplicate of my background layer, which you can do by hitting Control or Command J. Okay, so here I have my layer one. Now what I'm gonna do is go to Filter and then down here to Liquify. All right guys, and this is gonna bring up the Liquify dialog. Now there are a lot of buttons and tools in here, but it's actually a lot more simple than you'd think. I really only use one tool. So the tool is located right up here on the top left. This is the Forward Warp tool. So I'm gonna click on that. Now I want some options available for me. So if you don't have the advanced mode, if you just have size and pressure here, go ahead and click on advanced mode and then you'll have options for size, pressure, density, and rate. Now I'm really only curious, or <laughs> I'm not curious, I'm interested in size, pressure, and density. So what we wanna do, you wanna choose a size that's gonna be a little bit larger than you might think you need. And you can hold down control and option and click and drag to the left or the right to change your size. All right, now our pressure, we wanna go ahead and bring this low. I want my pressure to be about 25 and I want my density to be about 25. That's gonna make sure that it's not affecting too much hair. Okay, now the next thing I wanna do, let's go ahead and zoom in. I'll just show you how the tool works. Uh, basically, you just click in an area and drag in one direction and it moves the hair or whatever in that direction. So I can go to the left like that or to the right, just like that or any way you want really. Now, I actually wanna start pushing the hair from the top down to get the shape of the hair that we want for this image. So we're gonna just start on the top and I'm just going to continue to pull this information down. I'm doing little clicks and dragging over and over again. Now, this is going to be different for every photo, guys. This is why like, we're showing you the tools so you can do this on your own. Um, it's gonna be different for every photo and every photo is going to need its own retouching and its own hairstyle and, and things like that. So what I'm doing is trying to find the best method that's gonna make this hair look nice and natural and also clean it up quite a bit. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm kind of bringing everything in a little bit. There we go. And that allows me to just get a lot more of a cohesive hairstyle that looks like, there we go. Let's just start pushing that in a little bit. All right. Okay. And we're going to make our brush even smaller and I'm going to kind of fix this wave there. All right. So you can see, basically I'm just pushing and pulling pixels around. So let's go ahead and hit okay and see what that looks like. So here's the before and the after. And you can see like that's already huge, guys. The Liquify tool is really most of the work here. All right, guys, the next step is cleanup. This is where we're gonna be taking care of those little fine hairs and anything that looks too much out of place. So we're gonna create a new layer here and zoom in. I'm just gonna go right up to the top here. And you know what, we need to get rid of this area as well. This is where we pulled the whole canvas down. So I'll just grab my clone stamp tool. We'll hit S for the clone stamp tool. I want to make sure I'm sampling current and below here and I'm going to hold alt or option, sample this point right over next to it and paint it in. Now in this case guys, I do have a white background which makes my job a lot easier. If you have a background that has a lot of information, the clone stamp is still a great tool. You're just going to have to be a little bit more careful on how you actually use the tool. But keep in mind, if you are going to get rid of stray hairs, clone stamp is a great tool for it. So let's go ahead and start clone stamping some of these flyaway. I'll just zoom in and you can see there's some flyaway hair here and some other things like that that I can get rid of. So again, we're gonna hold down the Alt or the Option key to sample. And in this case, I'm sampling the white right outside of the image. And then we're gonna paint right over top of the flyaway hairs. 
Now, for this, I would recommend having a hard edge brush. So you can right click and go to your hardness and bring this right about to somewhere around 85%. It's gonna make sure, if you have a soft edge brush, you're gonna get a clone stamp that's gonna look like that, all fuzzy, and you really, you don't need that. You want something that's gonna be a lot harder. So you can clone stamp and get like a really nice hard edge there. Okay, now this guy I'm gonna get rid of too, so I'm gonna hold Alter Option right up there and clone stamp and go ahead and take care of that. And any other like little spots that I see and decide I don't like. <laughs> this is where you get to be extra, extra picky. Okay, that looks pretty good as a general cleanup. The next thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and zoom in here. I'm gonna create a new layer. We're going to go ahead and use our clone stamp tool again, but this time, instead of clone stamping from the outside in, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clone stamp some areas of the hair to cover up basically like little light areas. All right, so what am I talking about when I mean light areas? Well, it's like these little hairs, things like that here that are kind of just distracting and I could, I could clean those up pretty easily. So for this one, we're gonna use our clone stamp tool again, and I'm gonna clone stamp Let's try from here, sample, and paint right over top of there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my blending mode of this layer from normal down to darken. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that all it's doing is darkening my image. So it's gonna make sure all these like lighter hairs, it's just gonna take care of those lighter hairs. All right, it's gonna do a really great job at cleaning this up. Now, as with anything else, the amount of work you put in is what you're going to get out. So if you're not getting anything great, this doesn't seem to be working for you, um, just go, just try harder, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, that was the worst advice ever. Thank you, Aaron. Um, do better. If at first you're not doing well, uh, do better. All right, there we go. Um, looking pretty good. All right, so we can see cleaning some of these things up is really quick and easy. All right, that looks great so far. The next thing we're going to do is fill in some hairs in the hairstyle. All right guys, now this step I'm super excited for. We actually have a dark area in the hair where we don't really see any hair detail. So what I'm gonna do is clone stamp hair from another area of the photo and then place it right over this hole. So let's go ahead and zoom in to our image. Now I'm gonna clone stamp, let's create a new layer here. I'm gonna clone stamp on our new layer. Make sure again, you're sampling current and below here. And I'm just gonna sample basically where his head is and paint pretty much the entire head again, right over here. So I just have like a duplicate head. All right, so I can use my move tool and, and move this around now. Okay, now the trick here is we're gonna be playing around with our layer mask. So let me just go ahead and bring this hair in right about there and I'm gonna create a black layer mask. It's gonna make the layer invisible. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click on this layer mask, which makes the layer invisible. That's exactly what it does. Okay, now we're gonna paint with white with our paintbrush here right on this layer over top of this area here, okay? There we go. So by painting with white, this is basically making this layer visible right there where the hole is. Okay, now you're like, eh, that doesn't look right. Well, by painting white in this area, I've defined where I want this layer to be visible, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what I want the hair to look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlink the layer and the layer mask. And the reason why is this. So a layer is actually separate from a layer mask. Now default, they're linked together. So if you move one, the other one moves with it. But you can actually unlink these so I could move just the layer or just the layer mask. And that's what I'm about to do. So let's go ahead and click on this chain link between the two, my layer and my layer mask. Click on that chain link. Now I can move my layer. Let's go ahead and grab our move tool. I can move this layer anywhere I want and the layer mask is going to stay in position, which is really nice. So now when I decide I want, you know, some other type of hair there, it's really actually pretty simple for me to figure out what kind of hair and where I want it to go and what I want it to look like. I can even hit command T to rotate this hair around. Like if I decide, you know, I, I want a, a different bit of hair going on, I can totally do that. I can shrink this hair down. I can well, really pretty much do anything that I want to with that hair. You know what? And that looks pretty good right there. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's make this invisible and then back visible again. And then I can decide, you know what? I want to clean this up just a little bit and figure out where I want this hair to start and where I want it to stop. 
All right, let's make that visible and invisible again, just to make sure that it's doing exactly what we want. Okay, and there we go. We can see we added more hair detail to that little area. And we did it by unlinking our layer and our layer mask. All right, guys, time for the last step. We're gonna be filling more gaps into the hair. So for this, we're gonna create a new layer, and it's actually really similar to our last, the step we just did. I'm gonna grab my clone stamp tool again, and we're gonna clone stamp the hair just like this. Now, I wanna show you guys a little bit of playing around with blending mode. So if I just put the hair right there, you know, looks good, good job. Um, you can change, earlier we did a blending mode, we can change this blending mode to darken, which is just going to darken this hair. So if I wanted just detail here in the lights, I could definitely do that. I can also change my blending mode to lighten, which is only going to add highlights to our hair. So keep in mind, these are options, guys. If you need highlights or shadows to your hair, you can use your different blending modes to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and change this to darken. That looks pretty good. And now, again, what I'm gonna do is put a black layer mask. So Alt or Option, click on this layer mask. And then I can just paint white on my layer mask right over here and use it to fill in detail in the hair. All right, so there we go. And it looks really nice and natural. So it looks like we've got hair going pretty much all the way to the edge, which looks great. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the before and the after. So we just learned how to style hair in Photoshop. Here's the before and the after. Using these techniques, you should be able to stylize hair on any photo you have. Just remember these key steps. Start off with the Liquify tool. It's gonna to take you most of the way towards shaping hair. Just remember to create a duplicate of your background layer and then use the Forward Warp tool to push and pull hair around. If there are any stray hairs in the photo that are bothering you, just grab the Clone Stamp tool. You can sample from outside of the portrait and paint over the flyaway hairs, or you can sample from inside the hair and paint over little hairs that kind of get in the way. And if you need to fill in any areas, try clone stamping the entire hairdo onto a new layer. Then use a layer mask to define just the area you want to fill in. Then we're going to unlink the mask and the layer. That's going to allow us to move just the layer around while keeping the mask in place. This makes it really easy to see just how this hair is going to fit into the rest of the hairstyle. And to fill in more gaps, just grab that clone stamp tool, create more hair on a new layer, and then change your blending mode to something like darken or lighten that's gonna add more detail. All right, guys, that's all there is to it. Thank you so much for watching Flurn. I really like hanging out with you. I hope you like hanging out with me. If you'd like to do more hanging out and also learn a lot about Photoshop and photography, just click on your screen right now. There's a big subscribe button. We send free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or just something you wanna tell me about this one, uh, leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. This is the end. This is the end. It's all, that's, I don't know the rest of the song. This is the end. No, 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 this is the end. Is that a song even? Liquify and shape hair to get it looking, um, to get it looking, um, cool. So we just learned how to stylize. So we just learned how to style hair and for more gap fillage in. All right, and to fill in more, and to fill in more gaps, just grab that clone stamp. And to fill in more gaps, just grab that. All right, and to fill in more gaps, just grab that clone stamp tool. And to fill in more gaps, just grab that clone stamp tool and, all right. And to fill in more gaps, just grab that clone stamp tool, put some hair on a new layer, and then change the blending mode. Then, all right. And to fill in more gaps, just grab that clone stamp tool, put some, and to fill in more gaps, just, all right guys, and, and to fill, blah, 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 blah. All right. <laughs>